Today we know so much about the brain. We know that it can change. It's very plastic, so you can either change that brain on purpose and with purpose, or you do it haz haphazardly, which most of us are doing right now. Okay? We can repair and grow more brain cells. And I will tell you how that's done. From a neuropsychological point of view, your emotional state affects your physical and brain health directly. And that's not hard to prove. Um, there, there is that body-mind connection. So if you're angry, you're, you could be suffering from ulcers or from stomach ache or from other digestive problems. Your stomach could be eating you alive. Metaphorically, if you're having digestive problems, it means that you're having trouble stomaching life. If, if you're angry, your heart beats a certain way. It can be pounding. 50% of cardiac arrests have nothing to do with clogged arteries. So what do we really have here? It's not a physical thing. It's about how you feel about your life, how confident you are, how strong or weak you really are on the inside out. So it's about building your self-confidence, having optimism, having hope, having trust in yourself. Your brain was designed to learn. It gets so excited when it sees something new. But it also has the ability to unlearn because the things that you forget are being pruned away. So when you forget who your old self was, it gets pruned away. You don't remember it. You become your new self. So how you learn. When we were kids, life was a big adventure. Everything was a new experience. So that's why our brains are growing so fast when we're young, when we're little kids. But we can have that, too, as adults. The thing is, is that we have so many habitual and potentially boring things in our brain as adults or when we get to a certain age. When we see something that we are very interested in, the right side of the brain gets very excited. It starts kicking off. And if we really want to learn something, like let's say uh, Spanish, okay, another language, then we can really get engaged with that and you learn something because you keep repeating it and because you're engaged with it emotionally. So. If you really want to learn Spanish and you're excited about it, that's a great start, okay? So let's say on the left side of the brain, you already know some French. So we learn by association. So if we already have a prior experience, then we will take things from the left side of the brain and use it to learn Spanish in this case, okay? Because you're, you've already got something familiar that you can draw upon. And so as you keep learning, you keep repeating, and you keep being excited and happy about what you're doing, then eventually the information gets stored on the left-hand side. So your brain is always working together. There's none of this right brain versus left brain. Your entire brain is always doing something together with you, OK? Now, Quality counts. So you can use your brain to heal your brain. And I said quality counts because you have to optimize how you feel and what you're thinking in order to make this repatterning, rewiring of the brain work the way you want it to. You have a choice. You are in full control of your lives. You are in full control of your health. That explains how people who were told that they would never walk, that they would be vegetables, who said, I don't believe any of this. I'm going to be who I am. 
Nobody likes documenting stuff like this, but I guess Norman Doidge did some of it. But the fact is, is that you are in control of what you want. So I said quality, quality counts, so we have to talk about stress. And my definition of stress is very, very simple. It's helplessness, despair, and suffering. There is no such thing as positive and negative stress. Stress is all negative, and it's doing you harm. And I will show you how it harms the brain. OK, so let's say we see something or we think of something, and uh, it makes us feel bad. So we head straight into a stressful response. OK, now the brain doesn't distinguish between a real threat between an imagined one. So this is what worry is about. And this is what my exercise was about this morning. Worry is often imaginary, right? <laughs> we think something's going to happen or it won't happen. So we're worried about something that hasn't happened, and we have no proof that it will. So right off the bat, the hypothalamus send signals down the spinal cord to the, adrenal, to the adrenal glands which sit on top of the kidneys, okay? And they start secreting adrenaline. At the same time, the hypothalamus talks to the pituitary gland at the bottom of our brain, and it tells it to do something, and it also sends signals down to adrenal cortex this time, which is also an adrenal glands, and it starts secreting cortisol. At the same time, the hippocampus is talking to the hypothalamus, and when it gets to a certain point of there's a certain level of cortisol in the bloodstream, it says, okay, well, uh, you can stop it now, we've had enough. So it kicks off the parasympathetic nervous system and you start calming down. Now, when the hippocampus is healthy, that's what it's doing. The hippocampus is important because it's the part of the brain where it deals with our memories, with learning, and with memory, learning, and emotions, OK? It's also where most of our new brain cells are being created. Because as long as you are creating new memories, it's going to create new brain cells for you. Now, remember, I said quality counts. So when the hippocampus becomes unhealthy, it can no longer talk to the hypothalamus to tell it to stop secreting cortisol. How it becomes unhealthy is through chronic stress and repeated firing of those brain cells or neurons. Because cortisol excites the brain cells, and they keep firing over and over and over again. Well. If they're doing it too often, the cells actually start dying off, OK? And when the hippocampus is unwell, when that part of the brain is unwell, it also stops creating new brain cells. So under chronic stress, under prolonged unhappiness, dissatisfaction, whatever you want to call it in your life, your brain is going to shrink. But the good news is you can reverse it. You can reverse it. You have to stop our most natural way of thinking and feeling and feeling and thinking to repattern the brain. So this is a choice now. Natural in this context means habitual. So what are you habitually feeling and thinking? Are you feeling good most of the time? Are you feeling flat all the time? Also an indication of pathology? Not good. Okay, you're either feeling, if you're feeling bad or neutral, flat, not good. Because what you want to do is turn on the healing bio biochemicals, which include the endorphins, dopamine, oxytocin, and serotonin. 
So dopamine flows when you take a step towards a goal, when you expect to be rewarded, when your efforts are rewarded and you achieve your goal. This is about self-trust, self-confidence. This is about optimism. Serotonin flows when you think you are an important person. Again, self-confidence, optimism. Oxytocin flows from human touch, human connection. It flows because you are thinking and feeling fondly about someone that you deeply care for and love, and God damn it, I hope that includes yourself. Love yourself, because you're worth it. God damn it. <laughs> when you are optimistic again, you set goals, you feel motivated, you take action, you're enthusiastic, you're confident, you think straight, you're resilient, and you have a fantastic memory. Think of the simplicity of this model and how it would solve so many things that are scaring us right now. Alzheimer's, dementia, people predicting that 55% of the population is blah, 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 and I say, it's bullshit. It is. It's bull, because you have control of every part of your body, as long as you take control of your mind. So remember this today. Stress kills brain cells. Optimism heals them. So do you want to live your life? Or do you want to live somebody else's life? It's your choice. Don't listen to people that tell you you can't do anything. Don't, tell, don't listen to people who tell you that, no, you can't do that. Who do you think you are? Don't listen to people that are trying to drag you down. Okay? Ignore them. Optimistic people ignore naysayers. They ignore the bad news that they hear on the news. In fact, I would say don't even listen to the news. Okay?